know, we have certain strong mythologies in this country about um, how we will act, you know, when faced with adversity, you know. Um, it's, it's a powerful idea for Americans that there's a line that you cannot cross, that um, our families are sacred, that our homes are sacred, that our territory is sacred and that um, we will be peaceable as long as you do not invade that territory. To the west of here is a vast expanse of untamed territory. This movie is about the ages of a man, you know, an American man, and his journey from innocence to some sort of uh, earned knowledge, you know, at great cost. He gives him uh, advice on work ethic and what it means to be a man in the strictest sense of the term, that you are a man of your word, and that if you start a job, you finish it. And then integrity was everything uh, with Nicholas Earp. And I think he instilled that part of him in, in Wyatt. Why'd you wait till I left to take off, Wyatt? If you think it's the right thing. He went west, he was familiar with it. He was comfortable in it. He was unafraid of it. We'll go to California and see what we can make of that place. And he was involved in a lot of the things that um, uh, are pivotal to our images of those times. You know, he, he was in a covered wagon. He traveled west to California. He um, worked uh, during the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, he worked as a buffalo hunter at the time when we decimated the buffalo herds. Um, he became a lawman in the cattle towns of Kansas and Arizona. All those things which we associate with that burgeoning period, he was right at the heart of it. So he sort of spanned that. And he was an epic, uh, mythic kind of figure. There's something very powerful about the image of a man on a horse in a beautiful landscape. It's all about possibility. It's about self-reliance. It's about someone whose fate can turn at any moment. It's about finding your destiny, you know, in the open spaces. Those are very powerful ideas, you know, that you could get on a horse and, and, and pack a saddlebag and change your life. That's a, a tr terribly attractive idea, not just to Americans, but to all people, which is freedom. The issue of how to conduct yourself when there are no rules is what I think is in all the work that I've done, whether Western or not. That's what uh, Body Heat is about to some extent, and Big Chill and Grand Canyon is about the difficulty of leading an honorable life, um, given this tension that always exists between our ideals and our desires, and Wyatt is very much a man. He wants things. He falls in love shouldn't be in here. I've been in worse places than this. You mean you want me to go somewhere with you? A large part of the appeal of this particular Western, of Wyatt Earp's story, is that it's very much a family story. Um, one of the reasons that the gunfight of the O.K. Corral it looms so large in our mythology, because there were hundreds of gunfights, many of them famous, but none more famous than the gunfight. And I think one of the reasons is that there were three brothers walking down the street with their friend, and the friendship is terribly important to it, who was a, a sort of adjunct to the family, you know, like a, an adopted black sheep. When you walked into the gunfire at O.K. Corral is when it really got sealed. I mean, you stand on their shoulder to shoulder with the other three brothers, and it's a trial by fire. He's just as good as being a brother as far as I'm concerned. You put three brothers together with a friend, and they all walk down the street together to go after some guys. That's pretty compelling. These three brothers and this friend went down to face the enemy, you know, and, and it is, I think that's why the Gunfight has taken on so much power in, in our mythology because that's what everyone dreams of, a family that will be with you to the death. It 
was that clear that the steeliness, the type of character he had, he was, if he lined up against someone, they really had someone to deal with. So he was uh, very often a very important chess piece in a town. I play a guy named John Harris Bean, who uh, was a sheriff of Tombstone. Um, a pretty enviable job in 1880, uh, partially because he was sheriff, which was an elected office, and also because as sheriff, he was tax collector and was able to uh, keep a percentage of the taxes he collected. So, I mean, that went with the job. This combination of politics, uh, the, 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 the Clantons and the McClowries were uh, cattle rustlers and, and, um, and, and timing and a woman. So it was politics, timing, and a woman. There was also Josie, uh, who was an actress that came to this town and came to this town because she had met John Bean, and he invited her here as his fiance. And once she got here, she met Wyatt Earp and, and ended up being with Wyatt Earp. Towns that sprang up. Um, it was a job that, that people wanted. Um, Wyatt Earp wanted that job. Wyatt Earp also wanted John Bean's fiance. She pretty quickly decided he wasn't who she wanted to be involved with, and uh, so she left him flat. <laughs> what? Allie. Wyatt. Thanks for coming, Wyatt. When there's blood there, when you're actually family, it really does, there's a strange power that comes with that. So this family's very powerful, which makes them attractive. We've been talking. We like it here in Dodge. We want you to stop talking to our husbands about going to Tombstone. It's attractive to meet someone who is that tight with their family. But then it's, it's, it's almost too much. I mean, it's family first. You brought me here to tell me that without my brothers? They felt that family was everything, that if you had your family with you, you could fight off the world outside. And it was a, you know, it was a pretty uh, rough world that they were living in. I mean, just being out here shooting with the dust and the grit and the heat and the corsets and the, you know, you get a feeling of how hard it must have been to be in the middle of nowhere um, and trying to establish a life. Every time you know, I come to the set, it's, it's just remarkable to see this world that sprung up in the middle of the desert, you know, out here, and all the little nuances, every fabric and, and horse hoof, you know, it's uh, enchanting. Victims of tuberculosis have a tendency to be very skinny people, and, and I'm an actor that I work from the outside in, and I feel like when I play real people, which I've played real people before, that I have to have a, a total commitment to portraying them and getting as close to them as I can. I was at 182 pounds and I was pretty robust and healthy and I, so I had to change my physical appearance and I wound up losing 43 pounds over four months to get down to where I wanted to get to. Look like shit. Good morning to you too, sir. <clears throat> you thought about getting some sleep at night? I cannot get settled until the sun comes up. We come here in the morning, you know, as, as one person, and you walk into your trailer and you step out as someone else. It takes a while to get dressed. It's, uh, you know, it's not jeans and t-shirt time. You can strap your gun on, you got your hat, you got your spurs, your boots, your long underwear, your ties, your vest, your watches, your chains, and it's a lot of stuff. And you really don't have to work that hard to uh, believe that you're a cowboy or a Western figure from history because you're living it. This experience was the best experience I've had yet. Um, uh, we, you know, Larry and our trails cross and go away and then they cross again and each time we come back together we're a little, we're a little older every time and um, we, we know a little bit more and we, in a, in a sense, um, lean on each other more. I thought Kevin was born to play Wyatt. Kevin, uh, his 
as an actor and as a star embodies a lot of the straightforward American virtues that we most admire. You know, there's a kind of uh, decency to Kevin, and at the same time, a muscular vigor to him, and yet a very sensitive man. Is this story worth asking people to come in and sit down and watch? Are they going to be surprised? Is it going to take them to some rare air? If you think that can happen, then you just have to be in that movie. The best times for me were in the movie theater. You know, we had four or five theaters in my little town, and I would go to them religiously. I didn't even care what was playing, you know. I just wanted to be in that dark room. That moment when the lights came down was where everything was possible. You know, that's what excited me the most, and that's really where my life was determined because it was so delicious to me, so fraught with possibility, that I said, I want to spend my life making these movies.